All right, here we go, section one, where we'll be discussing the implementation of modern device services. Now in this module, we're going to get things started off right with planning for mobile device management, or MDM. And it really comes down to planning. Any major effort you're going to be undertaking within your environment or enterprise is going to start with really good planning. Now, for the purpose of this certification exam, we're going to be talking a lot about Intune, but you really need to think about the other types of MDM options that you have. Intune is not necessarily your only option. So you have to ask yourself, what MDM are you going to choose here? Is it going to be all in on Microsoft Intune? Or are you going to leverage something like co-management in conjunction with System Center Configuration Manager? Because you have to remember, for those that manage their devices and packages and software distribution and operating system deployment on-premises, SCCM was really the way to go. Now that you're migrating into the cloud, you got to ask yourself if you want to keep any of that on-premises device management infrastructure in place. So those are two of your main choices there. And then, of course, natively to Office 365, you have its own MDM for Office 365, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. The key differences here between Intune and MDM for Office 365 really comes down to the supported operating system types. As you can see in this little table, Intune can clearly support more operating environments to include Surface products like the Surface Hub and Windows Mobile, unlike MDM for Office 365, which can essentially support iOS, Android, and Windows Mobile. It's truly a mobile platform where Intune can support not just mobile, but all devices, which is why MDM is not necessarily mobile device management, but modern device management, something that you may want to consider looking at changing the mindset around when we look at that MDM acronym. From a policy management perspective, there's some basic things that we want to address here. Much like we would with group policy objects on premises, we want to avoid any of those policy conflicts because now that we have device management capabilities through MDM, Intune, SCCM, and even group policy, we have to make sure that our policies are somewhat simplified and succinct so that we don't have any conflicts that result. So just keep your policy simple and scoped to meet a specific need in mind. Now one thing that's critical to understand is as we look at modern device management, we have to start off by activating the MDM subscription. Intune is automatically selected by default. So if you're going to leverage anything that isn't Intune, we have to activate those applications through the Azure portal through Azure Active Directory in the application blade. We'll go through that demonstration here in just a moment. So if you're using an AirWatch or a mobile iron, et cetera, that process is pretty straightforward. Now, for Intune, it's pretty straightforward as well since we've already mentioned that that Intune product is selected by default. But we're going to need to make sure that we configure the MDM and the enrollment settings. And in order for us to do this, we need to have Azure Active Directory P1 at a minimum to enable auto device enrollment. Any modern management of devices are going to need to be domain joined through Azure Active Directory. If you have on-prem Active Directory in your environment, you can do a setup and set up what is called hybrid Azure AD domain join, and there are specific settings on setting that up as well. You can also integrate the management through group policy objects, as we've mentioned before, in addition to integrating these devices for authentication using SCCM also. As we dive into our first demonstration, we're going to walk through the adding of Intune application for modern device management with Azure Active Directory. Okay, we're in the demo environment. We've got a fresh new demo ecosystem for the MS-101 course, and uh, let's get started. So as you can see here, we're not in the M365 Admin Center. We're actually in the Azure portal. Now, in the upper left-hand corner here, you've got the little menu drop-down where you can see all of the different options you'll have before you. Where we're going to go next is into All Services, 
and then from there click on the Azure Active Directory tile. On the left hand side you're going to see all of your different manage options and we're going to scroll down to Mobility, MDM, and MAM. Now as you can see here Intune is already added because as we mentioned before it's included by default. Now we can click Add Application and for those Mobile Iron or Mirador or AirWatch we can click any one of those and add those applications in and configure the URLs as necessary. If I select Intune it's not going to allow me to add it because it's already there. So for the purpose of this demonstration we're just going to show you the settings that are going to be configured within the Intune application. As you can see there's a lot of different options that we can define here. The options you see here start with MDM User Scope. Now, MDM User Scope is basically just a setting that defines your users that are going to be enabled for automatic enrollment through the MDM. Now, this is going to be dependent on that device being joined to Azure Active Directory. Ultimately, what you're going to do here is you're going to either enable this for everyone or you're going to enable this for some folks based on specific groups or users within your organization. The next is going to be your Terms of Use URL. Pretty straightforward here, but this is where we display Terms of Use and any legality Terms of Use around a proper and effective use of devices within the organization. The Discovery URL is pretty straightforward there. That's where we're going to be using to the device enrollment feature for the MDM. The MDM Compliance URL is going to be used when a device is found to be non-compliant. This URL displays any of that issue back to the user so that further action can be taken to ensure that that device is then compliant. So for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll leave the URLs to the default settings for Intune. We'll set the MDM user scope to all, and we'll go ahead and save our changes here. As you can see, the changes were updated successfully, and we have just integrated Intune with Azure Active Directory. Next, we're going to talk about MDM Authority. To put it simply, the MDM authority is going to be the single point of interface that allows you to manage your devices from an MDM perspective. Whether you're using System Center or Intune or a mixture of the two or even MDM for Office 365, you must set an MDM authority because if you do not, you will not be able to enroll any devices until this has been determined. Now, if you want to set the MDM authority for Intune, you would do this through the Azure portal, much like we did with our previous demonstration. Now, the authority simply determines which tool you're going to be managing those devices from. The authority decision is going to depend on the subscription, products, and licensing that your organization is subscribed to. The two main options you're going to have in front of you are going to be Intune and MDM for Office 365. Now, it is something that is worth noting that there was a third option included in here, and it was called Intune Hybrid. That product is no longer supported and has reached end of life. So again, you've got the two options, MDM for O365 or Intune. If you're going to set the MDM authority for MDM for Office 365, you can enable that through the Admin Center. And for whatever reason, if you do need to change it, you have the ability to do that at any given point in time. As many organizations have gone from SCCM or MDM for Office 365 to a standalone Intune instantiation is actually quite common, especially for organizations that have gone through a licensing upgrade recently. For our next demonstration, we're going to walk through the setup and enablement of an MDM authority using Microsoft Intune. All right, we're back in our environment and we are back in the Azure portal. Much like we did with our previous demonstration, we're going to click on our slicer here and we're going to go down and we're going to select all services. And then we're going to scroll down here and select Intune, which we've already done so. And then we are going to go into the device enrollment section. Now, as you can see here, the MDM authority is already set to Intune. But had it been inactive and not set to anything, there would be an additional option here to select the MDM authority 
And then you would basically have the option to select Intune Standalone or System Center as an option. We've already gone through this step and selected Intune as the authority, which is why you see it up here and an account status is selected as active. If we wanted to change it, we could go into the M365 Admin Center and change it to MDM for O365. But the idea here is that this is where we would verify the MDM authority for the environment in which we're managing devices. Another straightforward demonstration that just shows you where and how you can go and verify that MDM authority for your environment. Next, we're going to talk about device enrollment limits for our users. As you look at the restrictions here, like for example, max number of devices, that's going to allow you to restrict the number of devices a user can enroll. So these are options that say an organization leverages a much simpler deployment methodology, meaning say a one-to-one, -one, where each user gets a single device. You can specify that number, but Say you want to leverage a BYOD program where a user is allowed to connect their cell phone or tablet or other personal devices into the environment. Now this is where the maximum number of devices policy and restriction carries a little bit more weight. The allow or block based on device platform type, well that is going to allow a restriction based on the device enrollment by platform. So if you are an organization that only allows iOS or Android or Windows or Mac OS, this is where you're going to go in and specify that allow or block list based on the platform type. The allow or block based on platform operating system type, well that is where you get a little bit more granular based on those block settings where now you can restrict by version numbers of an operating system that you support. Say you want to support Windows, but you only want to support Windows 10, or you don't want to allow support of Windows 7. This is where you would specify those restrictions as well. Lastly, the allow or block personally owned devices. As I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to allow BYOD, that's great, but now you can specify a more granular restriction around corporate owned devices, meaning that you would have to complete additional steps to verify corporate ownership of an asset in order for it to connect into the MDM environment. There's a full list of setting enrollment restrictions by clicking on the link at the bottom of this slide, and I highly recommend for the purpose of exam prep and study that you take a look at that when you have some time. For our last demonstration for this module, we're going to do a quick overview of enrollment limits and restrictions. Okay, we're back in our demonstration environment again and back in the Azure portal. We're going to go back to where we were. We're going to go into All Services. We're going to go into Intune. We're going to go into Device Enrollment. As we've seen the screen before, as we've illustrated the MDM authority, we're going to go one step further here and we're going to select Enrollment Restrictions. Now, as you can see at the top here, there are two types of restrictions we can start with. For the first part of the demo, we're going to do a device limit restriction. And it's going to go through a wizard here where we're going to be able to specify a particular type of limit. So let's call this the five device limit policy. And we'll say that only five devices are going to be allowed. And then we'll hit next. We're going to specify our device limit. Again, as we've specified earlier, we're going to specify five and allow five. Here we would identify our users or groups to include in this restriction. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're just going to skip through this step, but the idea here is that you would identify the groups that you want to define. Once we've done that, we would simply just go through and review our policy here and create it. It's pretty straightforward to go through and create that restriction. And then as you can see here, there's a priority that's assigned based on precedence for that particular policy. And of course, if I want, I can go through, delete it, start over, or even specify additional informations here as I can go through and edit the policy after the fact. Now, if I go back, I can do another and this time I will do a device type restriction. And again, same thing before, 
we're going to say uh, Windows only policy, specify next, and now we get into a bunch of additional details here where we can specify the platform, the versions, and whether or not we want to allow personally owned devices. So as we mentioned, we were doing a Windows only policy, so here we're going to block Android and iOS enabled devices. We're going to allow for Windows MDM and Windows Mobile. And then for the sake of this policy, we're going to block the personally owned devices so that we can restrict to just corporate owned assets. But again, if I wanted to allow personally owned devices, I'd simply just allow those settings based on that platform and or version that I would define here. Same as before, once I click next, I'm going to specify the group assignment that I'm going to apply these policies to. So a good example here are, would be organizations that have a mobile workforce or a workforce that works remotely for most of their time or they travel a lot so that you can specify a little bit additional governance around how those groups of users interact within the ecosystem from a device management perspective. Again, we'll skip through this step, but the idea and premise is there where we would specify a group, we would click Next, review the settings that we just defined through the scope of our platform settings, and click Create. The creation goes through the process, and as you can see up here, the restriction was successfully created. And again, just like before, we've got a device type restriction with a priority one defined here. So, as we mentioned earlier, be very mindful as you create these policies and specifically the groups in which you assign these policies to so that you don't create policy conflicts for individual users that may be members of multiple groups that are affected by some of these device types or device limit restrictions. And as you can see here, that's the first module in the books. Our next module of Section 1 is going to get around the management of device governance.